Elections don't get much closer than this, nor do they tend to be as consequential. Americans are about to decide on the future of their country. Indeed, millions have already cast their ballots. Now, I'm in Michigan, which is one of the three most critical states, along with Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. They will decide largely the outcome of this election. Michigan went to Donald Trump in 2016, only just. It then went to Joe Biden in 2020, only just. Kamala Harris really needs to hold this state. If she can't, it will be very difficult for her to find that path to victory. So I'm keen to get a good understanding of what's going on here in Michigan, how people are feeling and why. I'm David Spears. Welcome to Insiders on Background. We're in Detroit, and this city is a Democrat stronghold. The Motor City, as it's known, was the pinnacle of American industrial power back when manufacturing in this country was at its peak. Detroit since then has gone through some very tough times indeed. Still, that vote for the Democrats has remained very solid. Joe Biden four years ago had a vote of 94% in Detroit. Donald Trump is trying to peel that back, appealing to the grievances of those who feel like globalization and immigration haven't worked for them. Who feel like the Democrats have not delivered, have left them behind. Still, the Democrats are confident they have a strong ground game and will bring out their vote, particularly women. Kamala Harris has been appealing to them on abortion and they have a very sophisticated campaign outfit here indeed. I caught up in the neighbouring county, Wayne County, in Dearborn, with some of the voters casting their ballots just days before the election. It is a tough election. It's a, a very close race. Uh, Michigan is a swing state, and candidates realise that in order to get to the White House, you have to go through Michigan. So we as a Democrat, we are well organised on the ground, and we are trying to reach to every single voter from now until then. Why are you supporting Donald Trump? We want lower taxes, better economy, border wall closed for sure, auto workers. We need to bring all our businesses back to the U.S. Because he's not corrupt, because he's a people's man, a businessman for the people, we the people, he is for all Americans. Do you think he will win? I don't want to say I hope, but I think he will as long as there's no fraudulency. I don't want to say that. Uh, and, and just on that, would you accept a Kamala Harris win or not? No. Yeah, it's scary. Um, I have two daughters, um, so um, their safety uh, is really paramount uh, in my brain. Um, I, I worry about uh, the U.S.'s position in the world. Um, and so it's incredibly frightening. At the same time, there's also, you do have to think about the day after and the weeks after. Uh, the United States will go on, the Democratic Party will go on, and so I think, it, I think it's important not to sort of catastrophize too much. Uh, we will go on no matter what, uh, but uh, that, you know, we are working as hard as we can to make sure that a second Trump presidency doesn't happen. Who are you dressed as today? Donald Trump. And why is that? Because I love Trump. And why do you love him? Because, because he made costs down. You'll bring the costs down? Yes. And do you think he's going to win? Yes. What do you think of Kamala Harris? Thumbs down. <laughs> Thumbs down. <laughs> what about you guys? You're excited to see him today? Very excited, yes. Why is that? It's Trump. We love Trump. <laughs> what do you think he'd change if he gets back in? Everything. He'll make America great again. What about if Kamala Harris were to win? How would you react to that? Oh, I'd be really depressed. This election is going to come down to razor thin margins and it's important to have your voice heard, uh, especially for the immigrant community, which I represent. Uh, I don't think they realize the danger that a Trump election is going to have. The only fair option to give our kids the right future in this country, in this country, which we have immigrated, we are naturalized citizens of this country, is to vote for Kamala Harris. Why are you supporting Donald Trump? Because I love him, because he's the boss, because everything he says is right, and he's going to make America great again. And what's the big change do you think that'll make America great again? Because um, he knows what he's doing, and he loves this country, and I love this country, and this is my first rail and I'm so excited. Why are you supporting Donald Trump? Well, for freedom. It'd never be the same if he's not the president. Well, Why would it not be the same? Everything. Our liberty, when you wake up, you take it for granted that you know everything's going to be there. In the next four years with the Democratic president, it may not be so. It could be like Venezuela, Cuba. It, it, each day we lose our liberty. 
day by day. It's the only choice for the USA. And why is the that? The only choice. Why because is that? we want our borders Probably secure, we care about our economy, yes, and we care about being a strong country. And we're going downhill with this Biden-Harris administration. They're a disaster. And can I ask, would you accept a, a Kamala Harris win? Will we accept it? Well, we'll have to accept it. I mean, that's part of our system, but we don't want it. <laughs> There's a lot of people in Michigan who you might know them as good, hardworking, kind, sweet people, but they've been fed that misinformation and they're afraid. And that fear comes out as rage sometimes, and sometimes it just comes out as uh, walking in the voting booth and filling in the bubble for Trump because he's promising they'll get the pie and they won't have to share. One of the most interesting aspects of this campaign has been the shift amongst young African-American men towards Donald Trump, some of them anyway. Four years ago, Joe Biden won about 80% of the African-American vote in the country, across the country. This time, the polls suggest that's dropping to around about 75% for Kamala Harris. And that could prove critical in such a tight contest. So what's driving this? Pastor Lorenzo Sewell is the senior pastor at the 180 Church in one of the poorest parts of Detroit. He represents a community of largely African-Americans who are doing it very tough, most of them unemployed. He describes it as one of the poorest parts of the country. But he is solidly supporting Donald Trump. And I asked him why. Well, because of change, even if I didn't believe in his policies and even if I didn't vote my values in terms of scripture, if I'm doing the same thing and expecting different results, that's the definition of insanity. And what I've seen in our community is we pledge our allegiance to a group of people in terms of a, a political platform that quite frankly exploit us, that quite frankly understand numerically they can't lose our voting block, right? So the Democratic Party knows one thing, they cannot lose the black voting bloc. But is it change for the better? What's Donald Trump going to do to help the lives of people here? Well, I mentioned my church before we were on air and how during the COVID crises, how he opened up the SBA portal, which that portal was started by Republicans. We know that he opened it up that portal uh, significantly in a way historically that it hadn't been opened. That's the first thing. The second thing is opportunity zones, being able to give churches like mine and other nonprofit organizations the means and the methods to be able to have programming so we can give our community a hand up and not a handout. And thirdly is election integrity. We know in our community that people's ballots have been counted that never voted. I have people in my church actually that come here every Sunday that lift their hand and say, I never vote, but in two elections, their names were counted. They moved out of the city, then their names were attached to homes that are dilapidated. You can understand that mood for change. Some in a place like Detroit just haven't seen much progress under the Democrats, but would changing to Donald Trump actually deliver improvement What's the actual appeal? Well, I believe that he's speaking the truth, right? That resonates with people when you're authentic and you're real. Typically, we've been conditioned to receive politicians that quite frankly tell us what we want to hear and has got us nowhere. Ideally, there are people who have no there, there. They're empty suits. That's what we consider is an ideal politician in America. But President Donald Trump, he's a businessman. And because he's a businessman, he's able to say things, being from New York, being from Queens, that may rub people the wrong way, but we're all thinking. It's kind of like that person you have in your friend group. They always say the thing that you're thinking, even though you may feel like it's, you don't have the courage, or maybe you don't like feel what? like it. Like what, what do you? Well, well, him talking about immigration. That's not a popular subject, right? But I have 20, 28 Venezuelans that come to this church that get resources to this church that take away black jobs from this church. That has happened just in the recent six months, right here in this own community. As a matter of fact, I have black men, if we were to go up the street, I've had black men say to me, pastor, let us take the church van on a three day journey so we can leave out of America, so we can come back into America illegally, so we can get the benefits and the blessings of those who are not even citizens. That's uncomfortable, but he says it. So that immigration issue and, he, and his pledge for mass deportations, you think that is resonating with African-American voters in particular? Absolutely. And then what he says about the black condition, right? When he says that if uh, Madam Vice President Harris becomes the president, that the whole country will look like Detroit. Well, Detroit was noted as the least safest place, the, the second least safest place in America to live 
the week he said that, two years ago, it was noted as the neediest city in America in terms of health care, in terms of security, and in terms of home value. So he's speaking the truth. That was Pastor Lorenzo Sewell talking to us. We will still see a very solid majority support for Kamala Harris and the Democrats here in Detroit. But if Donald Trump can peel away people like Lorenzo Sewell and those he's talking to in his community, well, that could make quite an important difference. We'll see in the days ahead. Neighbouring Detroit is Dearborn, and this is home to the largest Arab American community in the country. It's a community that's deeply concerned about what's happening in the war in Gaza and now Lebanon, and deeply upset at the Biden administration's support for Israel and the support for Israel from both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Imad Hamad is a community leader here, and he's urging Arab Americans to vote for neither Trump nor Harris, but instead vote for a third party, Jill Stein from the Greens. But won't a vote for Jill Stein ultimately help Donald Trump? Well, that's, that's up to the, each party how they perceive it. I, I understand that the Democratic Party are annoyed, uh, they are not happy. Uh, that many in our community uh, is going to cast vote for Jill Stein. They see it as a waste of time. They see it as a way that could support uh, former President Trump. The Republican Party may see it this way and may be happy about it because to them, and instead of these votes going to Harris, let us avoid it and let it go to Jill Stein. But that's not our business. That's not our making. You guys had the opportunity to do what is right. We didn't expect from you to do miracles. If you'd like to drop us a line about the podcast, please do so. Insiders at abc.net.au. We'll have more from Michigan live on Sunday morning. Hope to see you then. You're making us all feel very excited about being here.